you do terrifying amazingly well. And you're such, I have to ask. Thank you. Such a nice person. <laughs> you're very just low key, quiet. How do you write? Like terrifying, thrilling. Well, how do you, you do it? Thank you. That's a great compliment. And, you know, this is my ninth book. And I would say some of my previous ones are not as terrifying. But um, I, for me, like um, my best like comfort reading from a very young age, I would say from about age 10 up was uh, ghost stories. I just loved ghost stories. That was just my favorite kind of reading to do just, you know, at night to kind of relax. And um, even as I got older, when my taste in reading changed um, and I was right, maybe reading more literary fiction, like high school, college, uh, there was always something so irresistible about a ghost story that it took me a while, but I think of it as my first like reading love. So it was a great like honor and great fun to come back to it with this book. I did, I did a, another adult book that had ghostly elements a few books ago. I think it was like my fifth book, but I, um, that was more uh, psychological. It was about early motherhood and there was kind of a ghost in the story too, but I think the early motherhood stuff was really the scarier stuff. But this, I really wanted to jump into ghosts, like it being, it feeling like it could be a scary movie. So, yeah. Yes, I can, I, I can see the book as a movie. I mean, I, I mean, I loved it. So I want to ask about the title because I love the title. Mm -hmm. and it kind of just, I love to wait for the title when I read a book to see when it comes. Mm -hmm. So was it always... You know, when all the girls are were sleep, are sleeping. No, no. Um, for most of the book's life, you know, as a draft and everything, it was called the Shadow Season, and I thought I would get away with that. Um, it's called the Shadow Season. There's even a line still in the book where uh, somebody writes a letter and it says, "This, you know, the Shadow Season of the school, uh, you know, is it's January and February when it's usually the ghost, you know, shows up," um, but um, after it was done, the publisher said, that's not, that's not really going to work for us. I can't remember the reasoning. They just didn't think it, it was going to be effective, I think, for a YA audience. So at that point, and I've had this experience many times where I think they're going to take the title. And then at some point when they're right about to develop the cover, they say, sorry, we need something new and we're developing the cover. So let's come up with something else. So, um, cause they can't really do the cover until they have the, they know what words are going to be on it. But um, I just started going through the book looking for spooky lines or, um, and I, there is some point at which the ghost refers to when all the, you know, the other girls are sleeping or something, something like that. And I just played with that and we ended up using that. Um, and it's my first title with girl, you know, how that's been a big thing to have yes. a title with girl in it. So it's interesting. And my editor said, you know, I know there's all these books with girl in the title but they work people buy them you know so we'll see what happens but I liked the title just as well as the shadow season but that's the story of the title I I, I love the title and I love and I loved getting to the 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 point in the book where it, it, there was the line and I'm like ah oh, there oh. it is yeah. so um was it hard why did you go into YA because you you were doing adult and then you know um, a little. Yeah, that's a good question. In fact, the first book I ever finished as an adult was Young Adult, but it didn't get published. It was kind of like my practice book that that never get published got published. So I I always knew I wanted to go back to it, even when I wrote several adult books in between. You know, I just got lucky that the the adult book I worked on after that had a really good hook. So that's the one that got published. So then after that, I just, I did another adult book and another, and, but I always knew I would probably try the YA again. And in fact, in the meantime, a lot of people mentioned to me, like, why don't you do YA? Because I, my, even my adult characters tend to have a slightly adolescent voice or adolescent problems, or are they a little bit arrested? Like there's something about their adolescent past, they've never gotten over. It. I mean, not universally, not all of them, but I just have a lot of characters like that. So it was suggested to me that I should try YA. And I finally did when, 
my first YA was called The Leaf Reader, and it was about um, a girl who likes to read tea leaves, and it's through her tea leaf reading that she gets kind of embroiled in a, a missing person case. But um, the only reason I finally made the jump was with that was that I thought I really wanted to do a book that had leaf reading, tea leaf reading in it, because um, I really enjoyed my husband's grandmother would always do tea leaf readings for us. And at, at one point, you know, when she was in her 90s, she gave me her little teeny tea leaf reading book that, oh. that she used or that she had first learned about, or I, you know, I don't really know what her connection to that book was, but I always wanted to draw that into a book. And I just thought a YA audience might be more receptive to that um, than an adult audience might not want a whole book about like tea leaf reading. So that's how I initially made the jump. And it felt pretty, com it felt pretty comfortable because I'd always been pretty familiar with YA and I, you know, I read adult and YA and go back and forth reading it as well as writing it. Well, so then, then, well, then talk about all the pretty things because that was like one of our favorite books too. Oh. So this was the second oh. one. So yeah, that was the second one. And yeah. that was a little de of a departure for me because while it is suspense, um, there, you know, to me, fundamentally, that book is really about relationships. It's about a highly dysfunctional relationship and um, between a father and a daughter. It's not biographical. It actually was inspired by um, some current events. I, I don't, anyway, I won't go deeply into it. But um, so, yeah, that's what that was. I, I actually, at the time I started writing it, I was or before I was writing it, I was writing a book that had a lot about um, psychotherapy in it. So I was listening to a lot of podcasts about psychotherapy for a variety of reasons, like for research for this adult book that had psychotherapy in it. And a theme that I heard coming up over and over again, um, often with people who um, would call into these podcasts or would be guests of these podcasts who knew a lot about therapy is they would talk about how they had a highly narcissistic parent. Um, and that was just a theme I had never thought about very much before. Like, what would it be like to have a parent who's just totally unable to focus on parenting, but they're just totally focused on themselves? So um, I just wanted to explore that theme, but with a teenage character, like a character who's grown very used to her parents' narcissism and what that does to her. And then I kind of put a suspense plot into it. But for me, that book was very much about, about the relationship. So with when all the girls are sleeping, you bring so much into it. It's it's how girls get along, mm -hmm. um, how you know, kind of a, a an elite type of school acts and and covers things up, mm -hmm. and you have the mystery, but then you have the ghosts. How did you how did you put it all together? And were they all a part of it from the beginning? Um, no, I mean, of course, you know, I, I, what I started with was I, the college I went to, Mount Holyoke College in, um, in Massachusetts, it's an all women's college. And I had a good experience there, but there was this dormitory that everybody talked about as being haunted. And um, that was the initial inspiration. I was just thinking about that dorm and all the stories people would tell about it. Um, it was interesting to me to learn as I was researching, starting the book, that a lot of the stories people told in the 90s weren't the same stories people told, say, in the 70s. And I heard someone say that nobody ever told ghost stories there at all in the 60s. So I was interested in that idea of how these stories change over time. Um, I knew I wanted there to be this idea of um, a person who's not really used to this elite setting you know, a girl who, you know, doesn't maybe have all the resources that her peers do and her just trying to survive in that setting, just trying to get by. And that's a theme that comes up in a few of my YA books is a person, just this character who's not of great privilege, but with people who are, have a little more privilege than her. Um, I definitely wanted that to be a part of it. But yeah, there was a lot about girl dynamics that I knew I wanted to put in the book. When I started, I didn't know how it would all turn out. Um, but yeah, there was just a lot I wanted to put in, um, like this idea of, I mean, not to get too deep into this, but like poltergeists and how 
in the 60s and 70s when there were a lot of stories on poltergeists it was about poltergeists it was often blamed on girls like oh there's always an unhappy girl somewhere around who's just causing all the poltergeist activity or the poltergeist is attracted to adolescent girls and to me that's um a very creepy idea maybe kind of a misogynistic idea but i also just wanted to put that in it was like you know why why is there that dynamic where people have often in the past like people who study you know these spiritualist topics often associate girls particularly adolescent girls with ghosts so and i, I thought that would be interesting to a teen audience um since those topics have sort of fallen out of favor i, I just thought some teen readers would be interested to to hear about it and read about it and have that kind of be explored like is it just you know the dynamics between the girls is so like negative in a hidden way that they can't express that it comes out in a different way or you know i just i wanted to put all of those things in you know it was a very messy process it was this was a long revision process to kind of fit everything in 